Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that this finds you and your family doing well today. I want to thank you so much for joining me for this podcast. And well, you know, it's um, it's just becoming a habit now. Uh, God spoke to me today, New Year's Day 2023, and he gave me a prophetic word for the new year. Uh, this has happened the last several years in a row, and I've given my prophetic words and all of the prophetic words that God has given me, wouldn't you know it, have turned out to be 100% true. Uh, in stark contrast, I might add uh, and point out to the so-called prophets who give their prophetic words for each year. And uh, their prophetic words are either so ambiguous that you can't tell whether they came true or not because they're just kind of ephemeral, uh, mushy gobbledygook. Or they do a complete face plant and embarrass themselves before a watching world. And by extent, embarrass God and bring reproach upon the name of Christ. So all the self-proclaimed prophets, they have a 100% failure rate. I, on the other hand, don't even claim to be a prophet. Uh, and yet my prophetic words um, have a 100% success rate. They're proven to be true every single year. Uh, and it's going to happen this year too. God spoke to me this morning and he gave me a prophetic word. God spoke to me clear as a bell this morning as he reminded me in Isaiah 46 verse 5 that there is no one and no thing to whom we can compare him. God is wholly unique and without equal. God gave me a sobering reminder that it is only the wicked who think that they are just like God as he told me this morning in Psalm chapter 50, verse 21, a truth that should terrify all the word faith preachers out there who regularly claim to be just like God. What God told me should give them some pause. And you know, it can be very discouraging as we look at the state of our nation and the nations of the world today because we see so much debauchery. We see things today that five years ago none of us would have ever dreamed we would be seeing. We're living in a day and age in which a man can just decide that he wants to be a woman or vice versa. A woman can decide that she wants to be a man. And we are expected to affirm those people in their sinful delusion. And if we do not do so, then we, were, we are hateful bigots. In fact, we may even lose our job. So what is going on in the world? Well, God told me this morning exactly what is going on because he spoke to me in Proverbs 21, verse 2, that every man's way is right in his own eyes. And then in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, God told me that every intent of the thought of men's heart is only evil continually. And so what we are seeing is the depravity of man. What we are seeing is Romans chapter 1 on display, the wrath of God's abandonment. And so it can be discouraging as we see our nations led by wicked rulers. But then God spoke to me in Proverbs 21 verse 1 that the king's heart is like channels of water in the hands of Yahweh. He turns it wherever he pleases. And though there seems to be wars and rumors of wars and nations rising up against nations, and we see the discouraging news on television all the time, God reminded me, in Psalm chapter 2, that though the nations rage and the people meditate on a vain thing, he who sits in the heavens laughs. God scoffs at the nations. He scoffs at the wicked rulers. He mocks them. And then he reminded me very clearly as I read Daniel chapter 1 that he is in complete control of all things, working behind the scenes in ways that none of us can fully understand. And yet he is in control. His word and his decrees will stand. And then God reminded me this morning in Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, that all of us who have trusted Christ as Savior have been adopted into the family of God. And we have brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world. We have family members all around the world, the vast majority of whom we've never met, and yet they are our family. And this precious reminder God gave to me this morning in Mark chapter 10, 28 through 30. God spoke to me in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, and he told me that in this new year I am to 
pray without ceasing. He told me in Ephesians chapter 5 that I am to love my wife, Kathy, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. God told me in Titus chapter 1 verse 9 that in my ministry I am to both teach sound doctrine and refute those who contradict it. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, God told me that I am to join myself to a local body of believers, a local church, and have everything that I do based from that local church, a church that God told me must be led by biblically qualified men, elders, in 1 Timothy chapter 3. God told me in Philippians 2 verse 3 that I am to do nothing from selfish ambition or vainglory, but with humility of mind regarding one another as more important than myself. And whether I live to see the end of this year and start another year, one year from now, and see many more years, or whether God takes me home to be with Him sometime this year, uh, God told me today in James chapter 4 verse 14 that no matter how long I live on this earth, my life is but a vapor. But when this short vapor of a life is over, God told me today in both John chapter 14 and John chapter 17 that one day Jesus Christ himself will be my reward. And he will be your reward too. And God told me to tell you that you can know that if you will repent of your sins and place your trust in Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, who came to this earth as the God-man, and he willingly laid down his life on the cross. His life was not taken. He gave it. And on the cross, Jesus Christ, this perfect person, offered his perfect life as a perfect sacrifice to perfectly satisfy the perfect wrath of God. And if you will come to Christ in a true godly sorrow over your sin, as God speaks of in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and you will trust Christ and Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins, He will save you. You will pass from death to life. And that is the good news of the gospel, and that is God's prophetic word for you and for me this new year, 2023. And it is 100% true. Okay, dear ones, now I have an announcement for you. I want to tell you about a pretty large undertaking uh, for my YouTube channel, and that is what some of you may have already noticed, actually, is that I am beginning a daily Bible reading with you here on my YouTube channel. You will not see me. You'll just hear me, but uh, it's going to be, Lord willing, every day, and I'm going to follow the Bible reading plan that was compiled by Robert Murray McShane. He was uh, a minister in the Church of Scotland between the years 1835 and 1843. And you might notice that's just a handful of years, just eight years. He died when he was very, very young. He was only 29 years of age when he died. He was engaged to be married, actually, when he died. But uh, Robert Murray McShane was known for having um, a great care and devotion to holiness, uh, to service to God. He was brilliant uh, to be as young as he was. Uh, he was fluent in both Greek and Hebrew. Um, and just, um, he's kind of one of those unsung heroes uh, of, the, of the Puritan era, latter Puritan era anyway. But uh, he compiled this Bible reading plan. And it generally consists of two readings from the Old Testament and two from the New Testament each day. And so um, I'm going to try to, to do this and I, I'm going to record as many as I can ahead of time. So uh, Lord willing, uh, we don't miss any. I'm really going to try at this. It's, it is, it's a large undertaking, but I'm really going to give it my best shot not to miss any days here. But uh, I, I think that this will be a real encouragement to you. And so uh, if you'll follow this along with me, at the end of the year, we will have read through together the entire Old Testament and the New Testament twice. So it'll be reading through the entire Bible and then some. So we'll go through the New Testament twice. And uh, this is something that you can just put on your playlist. In fact, I've created a playlist for this. It's called Daily Bible Reading. And uh, so if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, 
please do so. I think that's the first time I've ever asked anybody to subscribe to my YouTube channel. But uh, you can do that. Hit the bell or whatever YouTubers are supposed to say. I don't even really know what that means. But, you know, do whatever you do. And um, and if you can't, you know, there's there's days where we just can't sit down. We don't have time to sit down and read the Bible, right? But uh, you can play this. You can play it in your car on your way to work. You can play it as you're getting ready in the morning uh, for your day or whatever. And um, you don't have to you don't have to see it. Uh, just hear it. So just have it playing in the black in the background. And I think um, I hope that that will be an encouragement to you. It's already been a blessing to me just in doing it. And um, so that's about it. Uh, you might notice uh, these videos will not be monetized. I just want you to hear the Word of God, nothing else. No, no teaching from me in these videos anyway. No teaching, just pure Scripture. That's it. Old and New Testament every day. And uh, so far, I've recorded eight of these, and it looks like that they're uh, averaging out to be 15 to 17 minutes in length thereabout. So, you know, uh, easy listen at some point in your day, and I hope it will be a blessing to you. All right. Thank you very much, dear ones. Until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with you all.